The National Union of Metal Workers of South Africa, NUMSA, is today hosting the third International Dilemmas of Humanity Conference in Johannesburg. The Dilemmas of Humanity process began in 2004 when popular organizations and movements from all over the world came together to confront the crisis of humanity caused by capitalism with concrete alternatives and solutions. Let's go there live once again. For our people, it meant death to the Palestinians and life for Zionism. This is the roots of terrorism in the world. To occupy, to steal a land, a homeland for a people who were and still called Palestinians. Still, the, the Zionists are practicing their uh, their policies <clears throat> and they call for the whole world a land uh, a people without a land to a land without people to be the homeland the world at that time after the second world war practiced that they believed the big lie in history that they deserve a land which was promised by God I knew that they don't know God and God is not having a real estate to give those people and that people. <clears throat> but they practiced it. And the whole world at that time believed that those poor Jews in Europe deserve this land. They, they even didn't know or they didn't want to know or they didn't believe that they could give a land to be a homeland for other people. This is whole, in whole history. We didn't hear about such a lie until now part of the world the imperialists, the colonialists, the capitalists, they are still practicing this lie on our land in Palestine. And here, I tell you from that moment that our people did not accept this. They were faced by the Zionist uh, militia groups, Haganah, Stern, and all these groups who fought with the help of the British who were having, according to the Second World War, the mandate over Palestine. But they came to, uh, to uh, promote the uh, Zionist uh, vision towards this land and they made it in 1948. I'm not going to have a lecture about history, but I'm going to focus on the roots of this catastrophe that happened to the Palestinian people. We never stopped struggling, and all the time we were besieged as a people, in camps, in exile, and those camps are the target of the Zionists to delete them, like we delete something on a uh, uh, computer. All the massacres that the Zionists did in Palestine and outside Palestine, they began with Der Yassin and many other uh, 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 massacres, because this is the ideology of Zionism. It's an unhuman and a racist movement. 
It was condemned in the United Nations. But afterwards, with the change of the balance of forces in the world, they deleted it. And that was the only resolution that was deleted. Although there are a lot of resolutions in the United Nations until now, from the resolution 194 that calls Israel to accept the return of Palestinians is as a condition to be Israel a state in the United Nations. Look how cruel what did the United Nations to us at that time. <coughs> Israel was recognized as state and the Palestinians are still refugees. I'm one of them. Here in South Africa, the sufferings of the people, who we are with them as free people. But it took time and it took so many sacrifices from the people themselves. We are not less than that. We are a people of strength, of will, of dignity, of humanity. We are defending humanity in Palestine. And this makes me call the conference to focus on this because if Palestine is not, is up until now, is occupied, there is no peace in the world. Only if we become free. And we all together can be free. Palestine is not only for the Palestinians, it's a human cause. The conference is speaking about the problems of humanity. This is the what we call that it's the reflection of what you think now about it. If you speak about poverty, uh, Palestine is uh, an example. If you speak about wars, Palestine is the example. If you speak about imperialism, we are the people who are now facing imperialism. We are the people who will make peace for the whole world if we become free. Without that, don't ever think that the water will be free for you, for the whole world. Because the Zionists now cut the water for two million and more in Gaza. Gaza now is the base for humanity, <coughs> although we are still defending our humanity. With our children killed, our women children are killed there, with uh, uh, bombarding their houses over their uh, uh, places where they live. And they want, as Netanyahu said for Biden, we are obliged to go with the, um, when it, uh, uh, the army to go in Gaza. But I remind you <coughs> for what Rabin said one day, I hope I can get up in the morning to find Gaza swallowed by the sea. Imagine how the world look at these people. Now, Netanyahu also said that we are going in, but we know that we are going to sacrifice with some uh, soldiers. He did not learn the lesson. The only way 
for the, the imperialists, the Zionists, the colonialists, the oppressors of the people, whoever they are. The only way is to, to use force against them, to use armed struggle against them with this and to hit them on the heads, always, in America, in, the, in Europe, in everywhere. I call all the people of the world where there is injustice, you have to struggle. You struggle with all means. We believe in that. But for occupants, they don't need except our guns and our blood. We are proud that Palestine, now Gaza is without water. Our children, our women, they are watering it with their blood. This is very hideous to us. This is very sad for a people who is an open prison in Gaza and in the West Bank and in exile. Now, until we are still in exile and we cannot go back because there is Zionism in Palestine. Not only Israelis, not only Jews. We are not against Jews. A friend of mine, where we were living in Haifa, I used to play with Tamara. I called Tamara many times through media. Tamara, where are you? When my mother said, we have to leave after the Yassin massacre. And I asked her, is Tamara coming with us? She said, no. I said, why? She said, she wants to stay. I said, okay, I want to stay. I will lose Tamara. And until now, I'm calling Tamara. We can make peace together, but not with the occupants. Once, um, Felicia Langer wanted to, to talk to me. I know, I know her name. She was a lawyer. She defended our prisoners, especially the women. I met her, but I didn't know her. And she said, look, Leila, that was an in inter international uh, conference about women. She told me, Leila, uh, I was hearing her. Her language is different, her uh, dialect. And the man who was with her, he told me, you don't know Vilicia uh, Langer? I said, yes. He said, she, here she is. I told her, I made like this with my hands because I shed shook hands with her. And the man said, why did you do that? I said, look, uh, Felicia, when you leave my house, you are occupying my house, and I'm allowed to go my house. We talk together. Unless that, we feel we'll meet again in the field, on the ground. And she said, by fighting? I said, yes, because you are killing my people. <coughs> I'm telling this to show that every Palestinian, every Palestinian, wherever he is or she is, have the same story. Even those who are still living in Palestine in 1948, they suffered a lot. They were under any uh, military uh, law for 10 years. To be acknowledged from the state of Israel that they are not citizens, but they are people staying on our land. Imagine one million and a half Palestinians. They have only uh, uh, to, to stay there, even though they gave them an Israeli passport. 
but still they are considered, they are not considered as civilians. And all the governments of Israel always say, speak about them as demographic bomb. Can you imagine what does that mean? That we are bombs living in our, on our land. They consider us bombs, not human beings. While they have the nuclear bomb and we speak at it and as them as human beings. But they are occupants. We will not forget and we will not be uh, we will not forgive until Palestine is free. Now let me the message that I will tell you about to spread the news and the ideas. As Lenin said, what shall we do? This is the question. And this question must be answered according to the facts, according to the balance of forces in this world, according to the sufferings of peoples who are still living under oppression. And this will condense your uh, uh, <coughs> mission, humanity, and uh, problems. This is a problem for all humanity. And when people suffer, fight, organize themselves, I think we will be victorious. And this question, I will try to give some ideas. It's not enough to go to the streets. It is appreciated highly by us. And this is one of the peaceful means to use. We use peaceful uh, tools also. When we call for BDS, we learned that from South Africa. And we still say Durban is the, uh, uh, is the capital of BDS. But I say South Africa is all BDS. I know it, I know it. But we use also some other means. But it is not the mainstream for liberation. It's not the mainstream for freedom. The mainstream for people is to go to arms, always, wherever. There is oppression. This oppression is facing people with killing people. If they go to demonstration, demonstrations, they kill them. The peasants, the workers, everywhere in the world. So we have to use new ones according to the attack on us. Look what happened. The United States came to the West, the uh, Middle East, as they say. They are not coming to help the oppressed. They are coming to pressure us and to pressure Israel to go on with her attack on us. When people rise, the occupants begin to shiver. They feel it, the fear. They fear us. And this is important to change the balance of forces. Let them fear everywhere. They are thieves. They uh, stole our land and built for it, uh, on it, the settlements. Israel is a state of settlements. It's not a state that was born by people who were living on it, historically speaking. 
That's why Blinken comes and the ministers of defense of Europe, they come to discuss the conflict as if it's a small thing. But they are shivering now to defend the base of terrorism in the world. They are shivering and they look at Israel as if it's homeland, not our homeland. But our people are strong enough to spread the facts of this conflict. You are now Palestinians when you speak about Palestine and to spread the truth of Palestine. Now, this conference has a mission how to support the struggle of Palestine until liberation. It will take time. Don't get bored being, having a long time to be with us. We deserve it and we appreciate what you do for us. <coughs> there are a lot who died, were martyrs in Palestine. I remind you of Rachel Khoury who was killed by an Israeli uh, bulldozer. Imagine nobody was charged of this cruel thing, not only cruel, criminal. And all the media are speaking about international law. I tell you, this is a lie. We have to learn the lesson. We have all to learn the lesson that the United Nations have a lot of resolutions. And yet, none of these resolutions was uh, implemented in, in Palestine. The resolution 194 calls for the return of Palestinians. This is in 1947. Imagine what is the power of the United Nations. It's the power of the imperialists. There are few. Yes, they are few who are with us as governments. China, Russia, Venezuela, Cuba, uh, uh, other countries. But still, no resolution is implemented. It's the power of the oppressors, the capitalists, the imperialists, uh, and the Zionists. You know that Zionist is a strong movement. But it doesn't mean they, they speak about democracy. They want, uh, uh, they defend uh, uh, human rights. Human rights in America, when it crosses the ocean, is something else. In Iraq, in Afghanistan, in Vietnam, in South Africa, in every country of the world, they speak about human rights as if they are the defenders. They are the violators of human rights everywhere in this world. We have to stop them. We stop them in, in, in our countries. We stop them when we uh, mobilize our peoples in the world to show them that. All right, we come out of that uh, a third international dilemmas of humanity conference.